Revan's soul would not allow itself to fade out of existence. There, in the fragments of his being, he could now see it. The darkness he had separated from long ago. That part of him he'd used as a living shield against the Emperor's tortures and his dread masters, as he focused on the Force. After three hundred years of torture, it was given shape, and his fractured mind, the part he cut himself from, refused to be at peace. A mind forged under torment was no longer subdued. It was free, and it sought revenge. His dark spirit, isolated from the light, could finally draw on the dark side of the Force. It could see nothing but anger and hatred, for it was born in it. In time, this fragment of Revan's soul would grow strong enough, channeling rage and hatred, and forge itself into flesh. His spirit, his light side form, was now anchored, unable to merge fully with the Force, and it could do nothing but observe as his rage took form, embracing the full extent of the dark side. This crazed dark Revan too would seek to destroy the Emperor, but he was utterly ruthless in his quest. No more waiting, no more delays, he cared nothing about the Empire and the Republic and their war. To him they were nothing but obstacles. He would carve the path to the Emperor, regardless of how many lives needed to be taken. His imprisonment over the centuries had been a secret, but his existence had echoed across the galaxy for ages, and there were fanatics who worshipped his name during his imprisonment, on both sides of the conflict, known as Revanites. While the light side of Revan would have nothing to do with these people, his dark counterpart would use their blind belief to his advantage. However, he makes a critical mistake when he attempts to torture and use his own descendant, Theron Shan. His plan backfires. You're here. Come on, we have to go now. Escaped all on your own. I hope I would have more time to make you see. He's got a signal jammer that's blocking all starship communications in the Risi system. The fleets will come out of hyperspace practically on top of each other. No coordination, saboteurs in every crew. It'll be a massacre. And at last, the board will be cleared of distractions. Self-destruct sequence. Come on, we've got to go. Shan, there are traitors hiding on every ship in your fleet. The Imperial ships too. They're manipulating the battle from both sides. I'm transmitting the traitors' names now. They're part of a cult. The Order of Revan. Revan? But he was killed. And apparently it didn't take. All ships cease fire. Open a channel to the Imperial commander. I've been listening. As ruses go, this is quite creative. It's the truth. Round up the people from Theron's list and see for yourself. And if you're correct, what do you propose? A meeting. Face to face on neutral ground. There's a town on the surface. Raiders Cove. We'll send coordinates for the meeting spot. Very well. I hope you know what you're doing. The Revanite ships have all been scattered, captured, or destroyed. Their accomplices aboard our vessels are in chains. You found a threat and given us the means to root it out. Separately, what do we have to discuss? Revan is still alive, my lord, and his plans don't stop here. The Emperor's not dead. Revan thinks he can fix that, but he's wrong, isn't he? No one person, not even Revan can truly destroy the Emperor. If your Emperor cannot be destroyed, why fear Revan? I would welcome the Emperor's destruction. Revan's meddling will bring quite the opposite. The Emperor's current state is nebulous, incorporeal, 
to strike at him, Revan will first have to return him to a physical form. Which is exactly what the Emperor wants. He will destroy Revan, then move on to the rest of us. In time, he will consume all life in the galaxy. You knew that was his goal, and you still followed him? I only learned of his true plans recently, and I am no more interested in being fuel for his insanity than you are. We have to stop this. Intercept Revan before he can restore the Emperor's form. The Emperor's hideaway is a secret, even to the Dark Council. The fourth moon of Yavin. That's where we'll find Revan. He wanted me to join him there. Never said I couldn't bring a few friends. According to our data, he still has extensive forces at his disposal. We would stand a better chance of overcoming them together. No matter what evidence I present, I doubt the Supreme Chancellor will agree to any kind of alliance or truce. Neither will the Dark Council, but my ships and the soldiers aboard them are loyal to me. I can convince my troops to maintain a truce. They've seen Revan's threat firsthand. Then we meet on Yavin 4. Agreed. But they would not be the only ones to follow the trail to Yavin. You sense it too. Not the ancient Sith, or the Emperor. Not Revan. Another presence. Different from the rest. Yes. It is more like you. I sense it too. Is it really possible that a light side presence could exist here? A light can flourish anywhere. Apparently. If Revan's spirit observed them at this moment, he would see, firsthand, how different the galaxy was. He paved the way to ensure there was a future, but it was never his to tread upon. His descendants, Satil Shan and her son Theron, played a key part in bringing two rival armies together to stop the Revanites. Of course, they would do it regardless of their superiors' wishes. I guess ignoring the boss runs in the family. Revan and his followers intended to perform a ritual that would return the Emperor's spirit into a physical form by killing everything on the moon. On the way to reach him, they slew many Revanites, as they knew with each fallen enemy the threat was that much lesser. Little did they know that in doing so, they were achieving the opposite. Through their united efforts, the Republic Imperial Alliance succeeded in tracking down Revan. Against a common foe, even enemies may stand side by side. Jedi, Sith, even Mandalorian. Shay Vizsla? Wouldn't miss a fight this good. Bring as many fools as you like. You won't stop what must be done. You don't know what you're doing. The Emperor is too powerful. No, not any longer. I have set my will against this creature for centuries. Only I can destroy him. Can't you see what you've become? Your hatred and regrets are consuming you. My own flesh and blood standing against me. The depths of his corrupting influence are endless. I will waste no more time. This must end now! Revan's spirit lingered still as he observed them now. There can be no doubt that he was proud of his descendants as they battled his dark counterpart. Looking at Satil, one could easily see much of Bastila, both in soul and mind. She inherited Bastila's gift of battle meditation, one that she now used to bolster her allies as they battled their shared enemy. It was also undeniable she inherited his connection to the Force, his power, possessing abilities limited to few in the galaxy, much in the same way Revan had used Darth Nyrus's lightning against her centuries ago, absorbing its power to defend his allies. Satil too would be gifted with this ability, capable of dissolving and absorbing energy to such an extent that she could dissolve a lightsaber blade with the palm of her hand. Her connection to the Force was undeniable, as was the unfaltering strength of her will. The two shared something else in common, as both Satil and Revan had children who were not Jedi. Even so, her son Theron 
was a formidable individual who played a critical role in bringing enemies, Sith and Jedi, together against a common enemy, as his ancestor once had. Revan never met his son, never had the chance to see what he would become. Bastila knew he would have been proud of him had he met him, and they both would be proud of Satil of Theron, along with every daughter and son that connected them through the ages. Revan's spirit understood he was right in accepting his defeat in the Foundry. He had no reason to fear for the future, for his legacy was indeed so powerful, even his darkest form could not destroy it. As the battle neared its end, and Revan lay defeated, the surface of the moon shook as a burst of energy accumulated in the distance. What's happening? Impossible! The ritual hasn't even begun! The deaths you've caused, the war you've fueled, it is all mine! This galaxy is mine! It's time I claim it once more! That was him. The Emperor. He did not assume a physical form or possess a body, and he left as soon as he appeared. None of it makes sense. The Emperor's essence evaded destruction once more, meaning that the Dark Revan failed in his attempt. He failed in achieving the purpose that created him. Weakened, his light side spirit took the opportunity to confront his dark counterpart and aid it in letting go of the anger and hatred that fueled it. You weren't strong enough to survive the torture or the battle in the Foundry. I faced them. I survived them. You've carried on, dragging the remains of a body that should have long since faded to dust. Hatred fueled cunning, but burned out all wisdom. Without me, you could not see. Finally understanding what he had become, the two fragments of Revan allowed themselves to be merged into one, as it was meant to be, and finally faded. Revan's fate was now the same as that of his former general, for he too could never truly rest until the Emperor fell. After seeing his descendants fight in his final moments, he had no doubt that day was coming.